Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the last set of notes for this first portion of our unit on linear motion. All right, this one deals with changing velocity. So what happens when things are not constant and instead are changing? All right, so when you want to change your velocity of two options, you can change your speed, all right? And in our car, we would hit the gas or hit the brake, or you can turn your steering wheel and change your direction. If you do either of those things, then your velocity is going to be changing. All right, now we can measure the rate of this change by looking at what's called the acceleration. So there's a new term for us. All right, now I'm sure you've heard acceleration before. You've probably also heard the word deceleration. All right, both of those indicate a change in the velocity of the object that is in motion. All right, now the formula, the acceleration, I'm going to abbreviate that so I have room, all right, is equal to the change in velocity divided by time, which is what gets us to our rate. Now, this formula is a little more complicated. It's not too bad, all right? That acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial, and that's our change in velocity. That should be familiar. We've used this idea of change in volume when we talked about displacement when we used water in our graduated cylinders. It's the same idea here. The F stands for final the I stands for initial, and the difference between those two is how the velocity has changed. And then we divide that value by the time, okay? For our triangle, again, I'm going to substitute delta V for V final minus V initial just for our triangle because it's a little confusing if I have all of this in here, all right? So acceleration, change in velocity, and time. Right, so as we saw with our other triangles, if we divide the change in velocity by acceleration, we are calculating our time. So time is equal to change in velocity divided by acceleration, or you can rewrite that V final minus V initial over acceleration. All right, if instead we take our change in velocity and divide that by time, we're calculating acceleration. So acceleration is change in velocity divided by time, or you can rewrite that change vinyl velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. If you calc your, sorry, multiply acceleration times time, you're calculating the change in velocity. So that's equal to acceleration times time. And you can substitute in V final minus V initial for that delta V. All right. So for units, all right, the units are a little different. All right. So our velocity values are still going to be meters per second. And our time is going to be seconds, but our acceleration unit's a new one. It's meters divided by seconds squared. I know, right? Yuck. All right, but that's what happens if we look at our calculation for acceleration. We've got our velocity values and we're dividing by time. So that's what ends up happening to our units. All right, now with our other problems, you want to define your variables using the unit. So I'll give you the graphic organizer to help with that. All right, but remember what these units mean. Meters per second squared is acceleration. Meters per second measures. Velocity, just a meter is distance. You guys could all hear Siri talking to me, but just in case you did, sorry about that. All right, you need to underline the terms from rest to rest, stopped, and constant, because these are going to be, again, important clues when we're working our problems, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit about what acceleration is in terms of our scalar or vector categories. All right, well, acceleration, like velocity, is a vector quantity. It can be positive or negative, just like velocity. All right, and the sign of that acceleration tells us the direction in which the acceleration is occurring. All right, just like velocity, it doesn't mean that the acceleration is greater than or less than zero. It just tells us the direction, all right? Now, to determine whether an object is speeding up or slowing down, which is what comes to mind most often when we talk about acceleration, we have to look at the sign of velocity versus, whoops, that's not how you spell that. Sorry about that. Versus the sign of the acceleration, all right? So if the signs of these two quantities match, 
All right, so that means they're both positive or they're both negative, all right? Then that object is speeding up, okay? If the signs of the acceleration and velocity do not match, all right? So in that case, one would be positive and the other would be negative, then the object is slowing down, all right? So when we look at whether something is speeding up or slowing down, we need to know what's going on in terms of the velocity as well, all right? So let's talk about that just a little bit more. I have four different situations here, so we can look at each one. So let's say for our first object, the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive. So here's our person who's moving, all right? The velocity is positive and that means that the object is moving forward because that's what we defined as a positive velocity value. In this case the acceleration is also positive. All right so the velocity and that acceleration are working together. All right so for example if you're riding a bike and you start pedaling forward on your bike pedals that's an example of your acceleration and your velocity both working in the same direction. All right, so because they work together, all right, we know the object's moving forward because of that positive velocity, but because they work together, it's also speeding up, okay? All right, well, what if we have a positive velocity but a negative acceleration? All right, so in this case, we've got our person and the velocity has a positive sign, so the object or the person is moving forward, right? But the acceleration is in the opposite direction, it's negative, all right? So in this case, velocity and acceleration, they work against each other. All right, and when they work against each other, then we see something slowing down, all right? So the object is moving forward, but it's slowing down, all right? So an example here, let's say you're riding that same bike and it's an older bike, so instead of having the handbrakes, you press backwards on the pedals to brake, all right? So if you're moving forward, but you press your pedals backwards in the opposite direction, then your acceleration is opposite, so it works against your forward motion, so you slow down. All right, now of course, instead of moving forward, what if we move backwards? So that would mean our velocity is negative, all right? And let's keep our acceleration positive this time, all right? So it's gonna look similar to the situation we just saw, except this time, because of that negative velocity, you're moving backwards, all right? And this time, your acceleration is forward. All right, so again, velocity and acceleration work against each other. All right, so by seeing those opposing signs, I know first that I'm slowing down. All right, and because velocity is negative, I also know that I'm moving backwards. So just by knowing the signs, I know a lot about what's going on. All right, for our last situation, we're moving backwards, so negative velocity, and the acceleration is negative. So we're moving backwards, negative velocity, so backwards, all right? And that acceleration value is also negative, all right? So the object moves backwards, and in this case, velocity and acceleration are again working together. So that means the object will speed it up, okay? All right, so to summarize, the sign of the velocity tells us direction, all right? And we have defined positive velocity as moving forward and negative velocity as moving backwards. A comparison of the signs of the acceleration versus the velocity Tell us if an object is speeding up or 
slowing down. Okay. All right. So that's it for our look at velocity and acceleration. Sorry about that. All right. We're going to be talking a lot more about these concepts in class. We're going to be doing quite a few labs that's going to look at measuring distance, time, velocity, acceleration. We'll be using our motion detectors and graphing some of this motion so we can see what those graphs look like. And then we'll learn how to use those graphs to describe what's going on as well. All right. We'll also do some calculations. We can't always have to do some calculations. All right. But everything you need in terms of notes are going to be in these three sets of notes. All right. So make sure that you filled everything in and that you keep them in your binder handy. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know.